Hi, uh, so welcome back from break. I'm Henry Milner. Uh, I work for the this company that supports video analytics for large video streaming providers. And today I'm gonna to talk about the data analysis requirements that we face at Candiva, why we think they're part of a new class of problems, which we call time state analytics, that's worth paying attention to, and why the tabular data model that we all use is a fundamentally poor fit for that class of problem. And then I'm gonna talk about a much better abstraction for time state analytics, which we call timelines. Uh, in some sense, you can think of this as identifying the kind of abstraction that Gustavo talked about yesterday for, for specialized use cases. And we think this offers big wins both for usability uh, and performance for this kind of analytics class of use cases. So let's start by thinking about some uh, example queries that drive operations across various markets. I'll start with what I'm most familiar with, which is video. Conviva wants to monitor and analyze measurements from video players to find out if there's a problem with a particular content distribution network, in which case we might tell the player to stream from a different CDN. There are similar or even more complex requirements in other domains. For example, a credit card company might want to check for fraud by finding users who made purchases at multiple distant locations in a short period of time, which means some operator has to write a query that tracks purchase locations and distances across time for each user. Or a manufacturer might want to search for machines showing a pattern of degrading health over time, uh, integrating data from multiple sensors. The common feature of these examples is that they involve stateful, context-sensitive metrics computed over continuous time. Let me dive into the video example from Candiva to explain what I mean, what I mean by that. Uh, so the very common problem in video streaming that we want to understand is buffering. Meaning your device hasn't downloaded enough bits to play the next second of your, of your video yet. One of Conviva's key metrics is about a particular kind of buffering. It's a buffering that happens after the video started playing, when the user hasn't recently seeked around in the video, and when the player is streaming from a particular content distribution network, say C1 in this example. We call this connection-induced rebuffering on C1 because it tries not to count buffering associated with causes other than your network connection. Uh, so here on the right, uh, is a precise description of the four conditions that define this metric. Calculating this from video player measurements isn't easy. It means modeling the video player state across these measurements that we're getting, which is a stateful calculation. Uh, it's also context sensitive, since we need to look at multiple conditions at each point in time, uh, for example, to know what CDN is in use or whether the user has seeked around recently. And it's working in continuous time, since it's about, it's about computing durations. So this is time state analytics in a nutshell. We're computing context sensitive stateful metric metrics over continuous time. And in all of these applications, we also like to do this at scale, so cost matters. At Conviva, we've tried to support these time state analytics uh, capabilities over 15 years of building data processing systems. Over and over, using state-of-the-art database and streaming systems, we've been hit by high development effort and high cost. Our developers end up writing complex SQL queries like this one uh, for a simple intent like this. So this one computes that connection-induced rebuffering uh, according to the spec on the right. I don't expect you to read it. Uh, in fact, it usually takes me about 15 or 20 minutes to refresh my understanding of what it does, uh, and I helped write it. <laughs> and by the way, this is the simplest that we could come up with uh, after work workshopping it for a few days. And that's, that's really the problem here. I'm thinking on SQL because it's the tool that most analysts would reach for, but the problem isn't confined to SQL. Uh, we face very similar difficulties implementing these kinds of metrics in event processing systems like Spark Streaming also. To fix this, we're proposing a new abstraction called timelines for supporting time state analytics. With timelines, we get reduced dev effort and up to an order of magnitude improvement in cost. Uh, just one note before I go on, our examples involve both computing stateful metrics over single user sessions and then aggregating those across subpopulations. Uh, the focus of this talk is on the single session stateful metrics part. Uh, how we can build on that to do scale out or aggregation uh, is outside our scope. In the rest of this talk, I'm gonna show why this class of problems isn't well served by existing database models. Then I'll introduce our timeline abstraction, which is tailored for time state analytics. And I'll close with some of the early wins that we've seen applying this idea at Conviva and some next steps. So 
So what's the root of the problem that gave us this convoluted code and high costs? Why does our straightforward high-level intent turn into kind of a mess? Most existing systems are based on a tabular mental model with only minor changes from classical relational algebra. Here's our original sequence of measurements, and here's a straightforward tabular representation of this. Uh, this, is a, this is a pretty good representation of the input, but as we'll see, it's not a great abstraction for the processing that we need to do on it. Here's why. First, the table is missing a bunch of cells in each state column because our raw measurements are single updates for a single kind of state. To count durations in certain states, we'll need to do some stateful processing to fill each state measurement forward in time, like that. That's already a little painful to do in SQL. I'm also going to need to calculate and add up durations for rows that meet my conditions. Since each row doesn't come with a duration, I need to use window functions just to accomplish that simple task. Then the, the recent seeking condition, which is condition number three, is the most egregious case. The big problem is that I can't directly talk about the points in time that are within five seconds of that seek event that happened at T7 uh, in my table of events. To make it work, I have to add extra rows to my table and then use more window functions or even recursive CTEs uh, to calculate something. And uh, sorry. So these big hairy blocks of SQL um, are the parts of the big query that I showed earlier that are dedicated just to accomplishing that one task uh, of identifying the times that haven't seeked in the last five seconds. So our query wants to talk about stateful context on points in time, but the tabular representation with one row per event only uh, is a mismatch for that. The result is this unnatural code that doesn't directly express the query intent, so it's hard to understand. When Kandiva's expert developers have tried to write code like this for hundreds of metrics, we get long development time and we get lots of subtle bugs. And it's actually hard for a query engine to understand too. Since these queries need to use unions and window functions in several places, query engines insert multiple unnecessary shuffle or sort pages, and they get high costs as a result. So we've seen there are problems with existing support for this class of, uh, of analytics, which we call time state analytics. Our solution is the timeline abstraction. We started with a, a sequence of events, and we tried looking at them as a table. That leap turned out badly for all the processing steps that we wanted to do. The timeline abstraction takes inspiration from what we do on a whiteboard to illustrate and reason about how to compute metrics like this. We'd start by drawing the events in a timeline, like, just like I've shown here on the left, and not going to the table on the right. We take inspiration from this classic quote by Fred Brooks, geometric abstractions are powerful tools. What we're doing is viewing each of the measurements in a geometric way, not as a column, but as a curve that's evolving from left to right in the timeline according to its temporal dynamics. So some measurements represent state uh, step functions, others represent discrete events, and some might represent continuously evolving values. The great thing is that this doesn't just work for representing our raw measurements, uh, timelines of intermediate values that we need in the middle of our computation or the actual metric value that we want in the end uh, can be generated by applying operators that have simple geometric intuition to these timeline objects. Let me walk through, through some example steps in computing our metric. Uh, as a reminder, we want to compute the duration where those four conditions hold. First, it's natural to draw the player state as a step function. We take each player state measurement and fill them forward until the next one. So for example, the initial player state was buffer from that first event, then play when we got a play event, then, then back to buffer, and so on. Now it turns out this transformation from the raw events above to the step function below is a simple procedure to describe with concrete operators, which we could use to rigorously specify this kind of computation in a real system. We call this particular operator latest event to state. It transforms a timeline of events into a step function timeline by filling forward from each event when it happens. One of the four requirements is that a seek event hasn't recently happened. Uh, we saw this was very hard to implement in SQL. On the whiteboard, we would just draw that as a step function of true false values 
So true when a seek hasn't recently happened, false when it has. So that little window there is five seconds long. Uh, like latest event to state, this one can also be defined rigorously as an operator that transforms timelines. It finds the time since the latest event of a given kind, and then marks the times as true when that's above five seconds. Now, in the interest of time, let me skip some, some of the other requirements. Suppose we've arrived at a Boolean step function reflecting the first three requirements. So these are the, the times when there was connection induced rebuffering. And we want to add the fourth requirement uh, that the current CDN is C1. That's, again, a step function that's true when the CDN is C1 and false elsewhere. So these two timelines are going to be our ingredients for this computation. To get the times when they were both true, which is to say when all four of our conditions were met, we just draw lines down the whiteboard to intersect the true intervals. And what we're getting is just the point in time-wise and of these two timelines. Again, that point in time-wise and is a straightforward operator that we can define rigorously. Putting together all the steps in our computation, including the ones that I didn't show, the sequence of operations to compute connection induced rebuffering time on C1 boils down to this DAG. We compute the four conditions for connection induced rebuffering with four different operators. Then we add them together point in time wise. And finally, we count up the cumulative time where they were all true using an operator that we call duration where. So the number in this top right graph, which is the result of, of the duration where operator, goes up by one second per second when the, the condition, when all four of our conditions were true and it's flat when they weren't. Uh, the resulting timeline shown there tells us our final metric value at any point in time that we want. So this is the timeline abstraction in, in a nutshell. We have three timeline data types. We have events, step functions, and continuous values. Then the timeline operators let you do something with them. These are simple ways to express logic that usually takes many more lines of code in a tabular abstraction like SQL. A simple compositional language then lets you put them together into a DAG of operators to accomplish what you wanted end to end. And finally, you need ways to connect with systems that don't use timelines. Um, and for that, we have a few simple connectors, for example, to export the value of a timeline at a single point in time, which is just a single number. So let's talk about what the timeline abstraction buys us. At Conviva, it used to take weeks for a new developer to create their first metric. And there were lots of subtle bugs. When we rewrote our main production data processing stack using the timeline abstraction, developer onboarding time and bugs dropped dramatically because developers can more easily and naturally express their intents. So we're very happy with that. Also, uh, a more direct high-level representation of the user's intent usually makes it easier for any system to compute efficiently. And that's exactly the story here, too. So to understand the performance of timelines, we micro-benchmarked timeline-based implementations against three systems, Postgres, Spark, and TimescaleDB. Uh, this was a single node, single thread setup on some synthetic workloads. Even our unoptimized prototype beats these mature systems by 2 to 10x on these workloads. Um, we're very excited to develop a richer set of benchmarks and to see what will happen with future optimizations, uh, maybe even including hardware acceleration for timeline operators, um, but we're already very happy with this. Let me highlight just a few other directions of future work that we're really excited about. So we think that time, time state analytics describes a wide range of problems outside the, the video analytics, analytics domain that inspired us, uh, including just, for example, operational use cases in cybersecurity, IoT, logistics, and manufacturing. So we think timelines will be a great fit for those domains too. Part of supporting those domains is enabling a lot more domain experts uh, to write queries without being expert tool users, even of SQL. We think we can use the intuitive geometric representation of timelines and timeline operators to create user-friendly graphical interfaces for, for users like that. That could really democratize this kind of data analysis. So to summarize, uh, we see a growing need for time state analytics across many domains. It's a fundamentally hard class of problems because it involves stateful, context-sensitive metrics computed over continuous time. State-of-the-art systems don't work well for time state analytics because they present the user with a classical tabular model that's a poor fit for the problem domain. 
And the timeline abstraction offers an order of magnitude improvement in cost and usability for those use cases. So thanks, and I'm happy to take questions.